Hello and welcome to Tip Top C Sharp Tutorials. In this video, we will uh, uh, get to know more about event aggregator pattern. So, as a first step, we will have a primer on publish and subscribe concept, which is the fundamental concept of event aggregator. Then we will get into C uh, event aggregator pass pattern in action. And finally, we will summarize the use cases where event aggregator can help us. As first step, Publish and subscribe primer. So if you haven't watched our videos on events and delegate series, please do watch it so that you can get a better understanding of events, delegates, and all these concepts. So what is publish and subscribe concept? In the event world, in the event jargon, publisher is the source which will raise the event, and subscriber is the entity that receives the events and uh, respond to it, meaning that uh, Publisher will raise the event and uh, subscriber will have the handler for the event. So what are the potential hurdles while implementing uh, publish and subscribe concept? So as you may already know, uh, in uh, C Sharp events can uh, wire up to different handlers directly. So, But if you want to scale for many publishers, let's say in the order of 50 or 100 and many subscribers receiving those events and handling it, uh, it will cause a maintenance issue because you have to uh, maintain a list of all the publishers and all the subscribers and if you want to troubleshoot certain event then you will have to go to respective publisher and subscriber so that's causing a maintenance nightmare that is one of the main hurdle and uh, coming to event aggregator and how does it solve this hurdle and uh, concerns Event aggregator serves as a registry of events and uh, thereby helps a decoupled publisher and subscriber. That is the definition of event aggregator. And let's see how event aggregator is uh, providing us advantage. So publishers and subscribers can evolve independently and uh, scale the events in the system because it's a, a single place where we have all the uh, publisher and subscribers are mapped. Let's say you're adding new modules, we can just uh, plug into the system and uh, the expectation is to respond to certain events which is already there in the event. We are just subscribing to them. So that is uh, one of the benefit event aggregator can provide. And uh, if you want to add new events along with uh, multiple publishers and uh, multiple subscribers, uh, in the uh, conventional system that is still possible, but as uh, we saw earlier, it is going to create a lot of maintenance nightmare because you have to manually uh, make a list of all these publishers and subscribers. And uh, finally, event aggregator serves as a centralized repository for the events, which will help uh, map all the events and wire up to respective publishers and subscribers. Let's uh, see it in action so that we will get a better understanding of uh, how event aggregator works. So this is the central registry part. And we have uh, publishers, uh, which are the source of events on the one hand and we have uh, subscribers which will uh, handle the events at the other end. So publishers will pub, uh, raise the events to event aggregator and event aggregator will map to respective subscriber and each subscriber will have the handler to receive the event and handle it. Let's uh, take a look at the a draft version of event aggregator. So as a interface, we will have publish method for given type and uh, we will have uh, two methods for subscribing and unsubscribing. We call it as a register mechanism here. We register handler for given type and there is a event handler of a given type. Uh, respective uh, uh, handlers should take care of uh, the handle method, but we are not going to uh, the details of that method because this is the high level depiction of what an event aggregator will look like. And obviously, unregistered handler will help with uh, unsubscribing uh, the given uh, types handler. Let's see the implementation method. Uh, there are uh, main two areas that we need to understand here. First is calling publish with the event data. This will call all the event handlers registered for that type. So there is a conditional uh, addition of publications, meaning that you are in internally maintaining a dictionary of publications to which we need to publish the data. So first time if you are seeing uh, the event data and publication is not there, it will add to the dictionary. Otherwise, 
uh, it will just call the event handler method passing the event data and second area is uh, in fact which is the prerequisite we need to first subscribe uh, uh, to a publisher of given type by calling this method of registering it will just add to the event handlers uh, add method uh, so and finally we have unregistered handler which is just remove the handler from the event handlers uh, uh, list so finally let's summarize the use cases again uh, the first use case is uh, you need to design a GUI based framework where a newly added type is able to receive certain event and respond to them so if you have an event aggregator pattern already in place you just need to uh, add the new type uh, and it will need to implement an interface for that event handler and uh, the event aggregator can just add that in the publisher and event handlers list it will just call the handler and uh, another use cases you are existing libraries have a lot of events and uh, adding more events along with the publisher and wiring mechanisms this is calling this is causing a maintenance nightmare so you put in an event aggregator class migrate all the wiring mechanisms to event aggregator so that it is uh, responsible for all the event passing mechanisms to publication publishers and subscribers so that will uh, ease up and uh, decouple all the you know publications uh, and event handling wiring so that's all about uh, event aggregator pattern and its uh, benefits and its use cases thank you for watching this video have a nice